is a lecturer researcher in strategic design uh, in Dublin, and your seems like a very wonderful presentation. Can't wait to hear it. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to put you up now, and um, yes, I got your clicker right here. Hello. Do I need Do I need to use this? It's, it's up to you. Uh, you already, already For the recording. It's never nice to listen to your own voice. Um, so, yeah, uh, as Tom said, I'm a design educator from Dublin, Ireland, so I work in the third level sector. Um, I work on teaching people how to be designers on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and I also have a research strand which is very much involved in a lot of overlaps of the things we're talking about today, the common good, harnessing collective intelligence, uh, how universal education and social technology can uh, be uh, good things to, to move us forward. So the question is, what is design? I'd be very brief about this. Uh, everyone who des devises a course of action aimed at changing an ex existing situation into a preferred one is a designer. Designers aren't people who have polonex, listen to jazz, and bu build temples of aesthetic purity. That's the big, big, big mistake, I think, in terms of what people think design is. Um, those people drive me insane, and they are really toxic for what the power of design can do. So first rule, it's intentional. So we, we decide we want to do something. Something is needed. Whoa. What did I do there? Uh, we decide there's a purpose. There's a lot of overlaps here with deliberate, deliberative processes, by the way. Uh, we decide there are needs, genuine needs. So we hear the tragedy of the commons. We hear all of these kind of bad uh, patterns that are happening in the world. There's plenty of needs that we need to be purposeful about. Uh, we obviously solve problems in a pragmatic, inventive, hopefully, collaborative way. Okay? So... Synthesis is effectively what we are. Um, and that's me on the left. Okay. Um, this idea of just sucking and pulling in the best bits of anybody and everybody's ideas. And you hear co-creation is, everybody talks about co-creation now. This is effectively what we do. Polycrisis. I am the only person that can... I am only one person, what can I do, said 8 billion people. That's the Commons Earth. They put that up in social media quite a lot. Uh, we have the Pale Blue Dot by Carl Sagan. That's us. Just there. Um, you know, we are, what is it, one minute of 24-hour clock is the human race. You know, we'll be gone and the Earth won't give a shit. Um, Problem extractive systems. So this is, whoop, this is us. This is the state. And this is all of the mad stuff that goes on around us every day. Big tech, financial markets, fossil fuel, GDP, money, money, money. And these systems are incredibly agile and we are stuck in monolithic democracy systems. We're stuck in bureaucracy, techno technocracy, or whatever the expression is. And the, I, I, I love this phrase, growth for growth's sake, is the ideology of a cancer cell. It's by uh, Edward Abbey, the ecological philosopher. Um, it says so much. Um, and of course, this was all going great guns uh, after the fall of the Berlin Wall, and the 90s was like this rush of optimism, and then boom. This happened, crash and austerity, and we now have a situation where the people who created the problems are the ones who are presenting themselves as the saviors, um, which is this dude. Um, toxic triangle and dark triad, if you're not familiar with those terms, look them up. The toxic triangle is the idea in politics, dangerous leaders, loyal followers, conducive environments, that's what we have from austerity. Dark triad, psychopathy, malignant narcissism, and Machiavellia, politics and executive boards are full of these people. 
It's one in four, I think, in those environments. It's one in a hundred in the general population. And if you don't believe me, um, read these books. Brian Class, Professor Brian Class, and Professor Ian Hughes. Both have fantastic books on very well researched, know much more about it than I do, but these people, as we all know, are very dangerous. So hyperconnectivity is the first pattern I talk about, maybe. Uh, we have paleo paleolithic emotions, medieval institutions, and godlike technology. E.O. Wilson, sociobiologist, Harvard University. This is the problem. We, our brains aren't designed for the now. They're designed for a long ago period of time. Uh, they can't deal with the technology, and the institutions in between us and them can't deal with stuff. So we've closed systems, and we've opened systems in terms of this hyper-connectivity now. We all know about this stuff. Uh, we all, uh, you know, should know a lot more probably about the open systems, including Dissidium. Uh, we all know what Mark Zuckerberg says, move fast, break things. Um, so we've got private algorithms on the tragedy of the commons, which is probably like in this situation now. And then we've got the public algorithm, which is the kind of the likes of Dissidium, Polis, etc. Okay. Um, intentionality. Uh, we all know this. NASA. This is an example that's used constantly by a lady called Mariana Mazakutu, who is a professor of eco economics in uh, London. She's American. She talks about d digital public infrastructure and public value, which is really, really important, where the, the big grown-ups in the suits in the room actually try and talk about the commons in a very, very rational but you know socially capital uh, digestible way for economists and bean counters this fantastic service in the uk gov.uk which is like service design digital uh, infrastructure all this world and there's a fantastic book just out by called platform land by richard pope who was very much involved in the early days of this is fantastic i don't know how this happened in parallel with the Tory government for the last 20 years. I have no idea how they managed to keep going, but this is a really, really good exemplar of grown-up stuff. Some Irish examples. Economic development strategy in the 50s, free education in the 60s, free college in the 30s, and the, in the 90s, and then citizens' assemblies. So, woo. So this is, again, back to Mariana Mazakutu. She defines what the common good is, purpose, participation, collective knowledge, access and rewards for everyone, and transparency. So that's an economist, a big grown-up, who decides what the, or is defining in a paper what the common good is. We obviously know that Decidium and others, p p Polis, Good Enough access, Ancestor, Plurality, all of this stuff is good. Um, so we have... All of the stuff happening here, Decidium included, all of the deliberative technology. We have all of the big ticket universities are involved. We have all of the advocacy groups who are involved. It's really, really exciting. And then these guys are now in the room. Okay? Which is good from a technical knowledge and scalability point of view, but it's concerning in terms of can they be trusted being the arbitrators of uh, democracy? Google DeepMind released paper on the Habermas machine, which is basically an AI deliberation tool. Um, sounds very interesting. They got a load of Brexiteers into a room, made them all agree. Um, it's interesting, all the tech workers are leaving the tech sector because they're pissed off with the, 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 the dark forces. So, the future. People are the ultimate source of creative, of, uh, are our, our ultimate resource, creativity, ingenuity, and resilience. That's an economist again. The WEF, the, again, the, the big suits, this is what they define as the, sk the skills that are missing. Okay? A lot of them very much co-creation orientated. This is what the same, same skills as what we need for the, the transition. We all need to be able to juggle a few plates a lot more than we currently are. This is the current education system. This is what it should be. 
expertise is no longer how much you know, it's how well you synthesize. The future belongs to those who connect the dots. That's Adam Grant, a psychologist. So imagine if that happened, if we were all able to do that, instead of staying in our little boxes. And then the final thing, Stay 2.0, back to Mazakutu's idea, digital public infrastructure. We must create systems that listen and think more than it speaks. That's Herbert Simon. He's an old systems guy from uh, the 60s. So collective intelligence, exact same as the, as the, as the on an individual basis in education. We've got this is happening now uh, digitally. <coughs> so there's a really nice paper in 2019, Kimava et al. These are the these are the, the new jobs. These are the new needs. Capability builders, knowledge generators, field builders, network weavers, platform builders, narrative shapers. So all of the stuff that happens in between, all of the unspoken stuff that doesn't happen in individual silos of expertise, this is what's needed. And again, it comes back to synthesis. This is uh, Mariana Mazakutu. So we need a state moonshot or an interstate or transnational moonshot. None of this uh, COP24 stuff. We need new citizens who are trained in new skills for the 21st century, and we need, be it publicly funded or collectively funded, sustainable, deep investment in how to actually take this back. Thank you. Round of applause for Gerald.